It's Kitchen Courses with Kate and Eric. Hi, Kate. Hi, Eric. So this is, I'm calling it a tuna mousse for those of you out there who are true chefs. I know this is not a mousse, so please don't hate on me. Um, but it is kind of a, kind of a more moussey flavor and it has... You just mean a mousse because it's Alaskan and has giant antlers. Maybe it has giant antlers. I think there are moose. Moose is both plural and singular, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Moose. There are moose in North America, in Alaska, Canada. And there's also moose out in, where did I see them? Yellowstone National Park. And there's moose on this crustini. <laughs> okay, so, crustini. Sweat a lot of them makes me sassy. <laughs> Are you done? No. Keep going. You did did not, you win me over? I was going to say, you did not like the sound of tuna crostini at the start. You don't like tuna typically, right? I do not. Okay, but this was edible. Kate knows her tuna. <laughs> so Eric, I, I said I, could, I, had, I, had, I turned him into a tuna lover, and he did, he did fight that back a little bit. And he was like, I wouldn't say love, but I will have another. So are you ready for this, <clears throat> this recipe? Yeah, what's what's going on with this tuna mousse? Okay, so you're gonna take a, you're gonna preheat the oven to 350. You're gonna take a loaf of French bread from your local grocery store because you're not making French bread to make this crostini, and you're gonna slice it on the diagonal. We're gonna make 12 kind of appetizer portions. So in total, we're gonna have 24 little crostini bites, and then you're gonna take that slice and cut that in half. You're gonna take and put it on a baking sheet. You're not putting any oil, you're not putting anything on that baking sheet. Just put it on a baking sheet, put the kind of 24 pieces of, of bread, sliced French bread on the baking sheet, pop it in the oven. You're gonna cook it 10 minutes total, so five minutes per side. And you're gonna pull it out and it's gonna have like a nice, it's, it's still gonna be kind of a little chewy on the inside, but a nice kind of crisp outside to it. It's gonna make a little scritch, scritch sound. Yeah, scritch, scritch sound, you know it's done. In the meantime, as that's cooking, microplane a small garlic clove to get about a half a teaspoon of um, garlic. You're gonna slice, they were small red peppers, so I sliced about three. If you're using a large red, like jarred red pepper, it's, you could do it, I think, with one, because they're, they're pretty large. But you wanna, again, you want between, depending on what design you wanna do, between 12 and 24 little slices of red pepper. Um, shred those red peppers. Shred those red pepper. And you're gonna need four teaspoons of lemon juice. Fresh lemon juice is preferred. A little itty bitty food processor, right? We added one can of tuna in olive oil. Um, and that's really important here because you want a high quality tuna, a tuna that's also- Dolphin safe. Dolphin safe. So you put the container Save of tuna. Save the dolphins, Save not the, dolphins. the tuna. Yeah, kill them tuna, but we're saving the dolphins. So you're gonna drain off a little bit of the olive oil, put the tuna in here, put the one, one clove of garlic that's been microplaned, one teaspoon of capers, four teaspoons of lemon juice, two tablespoons of mayonnaise, and a couple of cracks of black pepper. Yeah, that's what we did. Mix it up. Mix it up, you're gonna blend it up. Process yep. it up. Until you get kind of a nice, smooth, moussey, moussey kind of texture. Um, you're gonna actually pop that into the refrigerator for about an hour and let it chill. Um, at which point you can pull it back out and you can, you just take kind of about, it's about like a teaspoon or two and put it on each little piece of bread. And then we decorated with the red pepper and the caper on one. We used a little baby, a, a sweet pepidou, a little, I think they're little sweet pepidous and olives on the other. And yeah, it came out, they came out good. It's delicious. It was delicious. Yeah. You do the tuna kind of mousse ahead of time. You could do it a day ahead of time. And then the day of, you could just, you know, do your bread and put the, put the mousse and the decorations on right before your guests show up and you're all set. Has anybody ever knit you a sweater? No, I've had a scarf knit for me. Ooh, okay. I 
had a sweater knit for me when I was really young. My mom knit me a sweater. And it was blue with white geese and with the yellow little bills. It was such a beautiful little sweater. I loved it. I loved it so much. I was really sad when I grew out of it. It's adorable. And now I'm wearing a rooster. I must, oh. I must like, foul on my sweaters. <laughs> I kept missing the hat, and I thought it was just, like, painterly brush stroke oh. stuff. Oh, yeah. No, it was abstract. I didn't know what it was for at first either. <laughs> Anything else? Crustini. Crustini. Easy peasy. Yeah, this was a pretty... I think he thought there was a... she's born with it. Maybe it's Crustini. <laughs> Will is shaking his head. William is shaking his head and you're crying. Like and subscribe the videos we do. Um, we do this for fun, but we certainly want to get the word out there about kitchen courses. So if you are having fun and like what you see, give us a thumbs up.